on our third stop to our final destination. We're talking about Final Destination 3. And I got to tell you, I did not remember this movie like being as big of a hit as the first two. Mm -hmm. But it was. This is the highest grossing uh, box office of the first three. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. I mean, the second one didn't break a hundred million. The first mm-hmm. one did. This one was a hundred and eighteen million worldwide. Well, that's interesting because it's the same director back from the first one, so maybe he's the key. Maybe, but this this installment in the franchise, which I had never seen before, um, I really this is your first time watching this one. First time, I loved it. Wasn't it the like just great? <laughs> it was so good. Uh, I mean, the opening, it was really interesting. The roller coaster shit is crazy. Really good. It plays on exactly what your fear of like heights, but also like the thing breaking and like there's so many feelings and sounds on a roller coaster that like make mm. you think it's already going to break. So like it's just perfect. They really so, nail it. So I was thinking about this opening and like, I think this is maybe the best opening. Really? Even yes. more than the car crash. Yeah. You mean the log truck? Yeah. But the, I mean, the car crash, the act, car accident from the first or second movie. That whole like, opening disaster. It's like the yeah, car yeah, crash, yeah, 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 yeah. plane crash, and so, now we're. So, yes. And here's the reason why. And I think it's very much because of uh, our age, like when these movies came out. So, the first movie is The Plane. And that's a very relatable fear, fear, I think, to most people. Like, oh, what if the plane went down? And then they went on that. Yes. The log truck and that whole crash thing, I think that was something that maybe not very many people thought of. Like, that wasn't a fear of like, oh, a log truck. And then it became everybody's fear. I mean, I've always been nervous behind anybody (laughs) carrying anything in the fucking on the road. So that's true. But also, like, when these movies came out, we we're not driving yet. That's so, true. This one I think is the best opening because all of us had been on roller coasters at that point. That's and, an interesting interesting point actually. I never thought about it that way. And like the the whole sequence of like things not being secure like the arm the 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 straps or whatever it's called that hold you down like those flying up like Yeah, I've definitely thought about like, what if these just stopped working? And then like when they got stuck on the loop and then like Mm -hmm. you're just hanging. I was like, this is terrifying. Like That's what I'm saying. Like they really nailed the roller coaster thing. They hit all the high points of like, I mean, literally and figuratively, though, like all the little things that you would think about or have a fear about. They literally hit every single thing on the list. (laughs) And in my notes, I wrote specifically, this is the most horrific opening because all of the other openings have like happened in a flash, like really quick. This was like drawn out over the ride. Like things started shaking. Mm -hmm. People were flying off. People were trying to catch other people. And then they hit the loop at the end. Yeah. Like it's just a whole lot of stuff. It's like, oh my God. (laughs) I know. And it's like, it's really just insane to me that like I think this movie is like the where I would say after this movie is where the series changes a little bit because mm-hmm. I think three really nails the same like it takes the high points of one and two and ro- like fucking just rolls with it. It's really fun. But like that opening sequence is just as like horrifying as the first two, yeah, if not more. Because it is also something that like everybody has probably been on a roller coaster. Even if you're not scared of it, though, I think that the the fears that they play into are like easily accessible for most people. Yes, for sure. Right? You're like, oh, fuck, that would be <laughs> horrible. Or, yeah, I've had that thought one time. I mean, I think about all of these things every time I've ever been <laughs> on a roller coaster. So, but I know, you know, I'm, I obviously have anxiety, so that's probably why, but I mean, I just felt very seen by the main chick, Wendy in the first scene. I'm like, that's me. I'm like, Hey guys, I I don't, I don't trust anything here. 
look at these like high teenagers operating these rides okay <laughs> yeah. first off that's your number one clue that like this is not the most safe place to be <laughs> <laughs> well and the scary thing is that this isn't even the most horrific thing that happens in this movie there's another kill that is deeply horrifying <laughs> Yeah, there's uh I would say they continue to just rack rack up like really horrifying deaths one after the other like even if they're quick or they're drawn out like they're very they get really graphic I would say compared to some of the other ones. I mean the other movies are graphic for sure too, mm -hmm. but I think this one really like turns it, it up adds, a notch. I think it's because it also does add a bit of CGI versus the first two really don't have too much. Mm -hmm. This one adds a bit more, but I think it still has like enough of the practical effects and the practical deaths and stuff that yep. it's not overwhelming. Yep. Uh before we get into the uh into the kills, I, I just have to say, um, God bless Mary Elizabeth Winstead. She is giving a real performance in this <laughs> That's what movie. I'm telling you. And like everyone else is just like you know this is just like a, a horror movie right and she's like no this is I, this is i'm gonna do this this felt, is my moment yeah i mean i love what well, like one of the things that i love about watching horror movies especially older ones is when you get to see like actors and actresses who are like huge now but like when they first start out and like a lot of the times they're doing great shit in these like shitty b movies or like the third final destination but like I personally think the main characters in this one are the most likable and like the ones that I actually cared about the most out of all the entire series, I would say. Yeah. I mean, she is easily my favorite protagonist yeah. of all of all the movies. Like, totally. But I think I, that the, the guy, which Ryan Merriman is the actor, I'm obsessed with him. I told you this before because of, I mean, if you grew up on the Disney channel, like I did, <laughs> you know, this guy from a, Smart House was when he first, I think the first one he was in, and then Luck of the Irish when he turns into a leprechaun. It's good shit. <laughs> and I just, I thought this guy was going to be everywhere back then. So I was so excited to see him in Final Destination 3. I don't know what he's up to now, but I thought he was also really great and they had good chemistry. Yeah. They, yeah, they, they were all really good. And then the surprise appearance that did not expect uh, Amanda Crew from silicon valley she's like one of the main the main characters in that show silicon valley mm. she's the sister of wendy oh yeah yeah she's been in a bunch of stuff too yeah like she's definitely like a that chick where i'm like oh i've seen her in a ton of shit but i just can't name it off the top of my head so that's a good call out she she's great in silicon valley so when i saw her i immediately recognized her I'm like silicon valley girl nice and, yeah and i think i've mentioned this to you before but um, Tony Todd is in this movie only as voiceover. Is Instead he the voice playing... at the train at the end? <clears throat> no, um, actually, I don't know about the train, but he's the voice at the beginning of the ride, the devil oh, ride. Okay. Yeah. Well, at the end, when he was like, "This is the last stop," I was like, "Is that could be? Is that I him?" Mean, they had him in the booth already <laughs> doing it. I would not be surprised, but he definitely did the beginning. I miss seeing him again but you know i feel like at this point they're just breezing past the mm -hmm. even like figuring out what the plan is and how to defeat it because like there's no need for it anymore we're on the third final destination everything's on the internet apparently <laughs> they just cover it in one scene <laughs> that was that was one of my notes i'm like everyone from the previous movies is dead who is documenting all of the rules online <laughs> like it was just that's what i'm saying they're just like streamlined the whole thing even more than like the last movie. Like the last one, they were like, they had some random guy explaining the rules on the news TV. or something. This, they like, we don't even need to do that. Just the the main guy, he knows the rules. We're just going to Google it. My question is like, okay, I get it. If it's like, I think the information you can glean from the internet would be pretty straightforward if it's like, okay, yeah, this guy had a vision and he saved eight people. And they all got off, but then they all died, even though like they were all like, so that's the information I think that would make sense. Yeah. But I don't know how they figure out about they died in the order that they would have, <laughs> because who's talking to the press about this? It has to be some conspiracy theorist on Reddit. It that's must just... be. <laughs> or I guess we don't know necessarily what happened to the two characters from the second one. 
the cop and the chick, they never die. That's my big question. The last one ends with Brian blowing up. Brian? Brian! <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, like, just, nope, we're not even going to revisit that. All it's right, like, right. Oh, okay, <laughs> assuming that those people are going to get theirs. But what's interesting is actually the original plan for this movie was to end it on the subway, just like they do. But Wendy would already be with her sister and with uh, the guy. And that the two people who would then get on the train were the two characters from the second one, the cop and the girl. And the girl was supposedly going to be like, oh, Wendy's cousin. And they'd be oh. like, oh, hey. And then they're all together. So then they all would have crashed and died. <laughs> so then death really just was like, let's combine this shit. And I think, I guess it tested poorly or something. Like people didn't like that ending. Uh. I kind of like it because it wraps up the stuff from two. I don't yeah. think they're, I think it's totally fine. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I guess I don't really care either way because it's basically the same ending. Just <laughs> it would be nice to know what the fuck happened to those two. <laughs> I mean, did they also get hit by falling bricks? Is this what happens if you defeat death enough times? He's like, fuck it. <laughs> Throw in a death or a fucking brick from space. We're blowing <laughs> up Brian and then I'm just going to kill you some other way. Yeah. Something stupid to make you embarrassed. <laughs> so uh, one last thought that I had on the roller coaster die deaths. So th what it actually happens after the premonition, I just had a thought. I was curious if you agree. Jason is a bad boyfriend and he deserved to die. 100%. He, he doesn't sit next to Wendy. Yeah. And then Number when one Wendy, failure. And then when Wendy's like having a full blown panic attack, he's just like, you figure it out. I'm gonna. I'll meet you after I go on the ride. Like, I she's know. like freaking out, and he doesn't even go over to like help her. He's like, I'm in the front row. I can't. I can't miss this. Well, he's trying to. He does try to get off. He's like, Hey, that's my girlfriend. And then for some reason, the guy who operates like the the only adult there who like comes out of the back, and he's like. He, he says to them, all right, nobody gets off, just the back. But I'm like, why would he say that? Like, you can't get off? Is that the rules? Yeah. And then the kid in front is literally yelling. Like, the boyfriend's like, hey, can, can somebody let me off? That's my fucking girlfriend. I need to get off. I need to get off. And they're like, sorry. And then he pushed the button. <laughs> so technically, he's he did try. But I think, like, I mean, maybe he's just too scrawny. But, like, if he really cared, he could have tried to rip that fucking seat thing off. Maybe he was uh, too distracted by the jock randomly backhanding the girl. <laughs> that was great. He's like, that reaction was so over-exaggerated. It was just like, he just pulled his arm away and then bam! <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just funny. I feel like they, they did a really good job with this one where like the exact events of like how they end up getting off the plane, uh, the, not the plane, wow. But the, the roller coaster is like very similar, even with like a fight starting in the middle of it to yeah. the original. It's the same kind of same exact gotcha. thing and the same amount of people get off too. nice little callbacks. <laughs> all right. So let's get in. Let's get to the deaths because that's why we're all that's, here. That's why we're here. Um, so the tanning beds. Starting this off is, with the goat, I think. <laughs> they really blew their load right off the top yeah first death i mean sometimes it's usually a good one or it's like drawn out or something because it's the first one to go but mm -hmm. i find that this one just is equal parts awesome and hilarious and scary <laughs> it's horrific like yeah like if you that's think about a it nightmare like this mm -hmm. is easily the most horrific death in the entire franchise Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, slowly burning a like burning to death, stuck in a fucking tanning bed. It's horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> At least one of the girls, I think, like gets electrocuted or something, or like cuts when she cuts the glass. But like, I don't know. It, either way, they're both really drawn out, like burning and screaming for a very long time. I'm sure <laughs> they wish they had died instantly on the fucking roller coaster. Yeah. Well, and that was one of my thoughts when we first see them. I was like, oh, these two are dying on the roller coaster because they look like the the cool, the popular girls in the first one. Yep, like, totally. They're dying. So then when they lived, I'm like, oh, well, that's a 
that's a wrench. It's like he saved him just to kill him in even an even worse way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've I've kind of just. I mean, we're on the third one now, and I do kind of feel that majority of the time, I, you might want to just stay on the whenever the thing is that's going to crash. Yeah, because the first death usually, not always. There's some small instances where it's worse if they die on the original incident, but. I would say nine times out of 10, you might just want to sit there and just yeah. wait for it because it's going to be better than whatever the fuck death has planned for you later on. I also thought it was funny that they were like, uh, they're like, what music should we play? And they're like, uh, Britney or Celine. Ugh. We have to be like the coolest customers they have. And then they, I thought it was funny. They both put their headphones in and they pick roller coaster of love i was like so britney and celine are lame but we're gonna listen to roller coaster of love like i will say roller coaster of love is a fucking banger (laughs) that is a wonderful song i love that song i think this movie like made me really appreciate this song but like do you know the trivia behind it why it's an interesting choice is because because of the roller coaster and the previous no but (laughs) that's just them being like haha get it uh, I was going to say the actual fun trivia behind that. And I'm, I think this is just a rumor. I don't think it's actually true, but there was always like this rumor that the scream that's heard in the background of roller coaster of love is like real audio of a woman being murdered. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I so never know that when you hear the screams in the background. They do sound like blood curdling. They're like terrifying. Yeah. And so that was like, I don't know. It could just be another urban legend thing. I don't think it's actually true, but um, I just thought that that was a little fun thing. I'm like <laughs> it literally like it sounds like there's someone dying in the song. It's a perfect song to choose. <laughs> but yeah, the tanning bed death is like, holy fucking shit. These guys aren't playing around. <laughs> yeah. And it's like yeah. my favorite in the whole franchise, I think, because it's I th- the worst. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's the best death in the entire franchise because a lot of the deaths up to this have been pretty quick. Or if they were drawn out, like the first death with the teacher in the first movie, like it wasn't really that scary. It was more like funny. Like, how where, how does this end? This is exactly. like, can we please stop this? Because this is horrific. <laughs> this is like death fucking tortured these girls. Like, what did they do? You know, <laughs> if anyone deserved to be tortured in death, I think it deserves it's Frankie. That guy with the fucking video recorder. I hate that guy. But I will Frankie say final, Cheeks. Frankie Cheeks. Yeah, fuck <laughs> that guy. First off, though, or sorry, not first off. Last thing I'll say about the tanning bed deaths is that probably one of my favorite film transitions of all time of the shot of the two tanning beds on fire. And then it just cuts instantly to the two graves next side by side. And mm. it's just perfect. <laughs> so good. And I do think it it doesn't quite make sense, but like they did it for the shot. So perfect. But like, why yeah. are these two girls being buried together? It seems weird. They're not family. <laughs> That's right? true. Like, <laughs> like it doesn't actually make sense in the context of like the world that they're in. But like, sure, it, it was a great shot. I'm OK with making that jump. Maybe they were melted into together. it melted into the tanning beds. Mm, and so they had to. So they're like, we we just we're burying you in the bed. The the, yeah. the tanning bed is your coffin. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, it <laughs> might save money. You never know. Also, we got on display. Um, it introduced in the last movie, Death has some HVAC skills. So he uses that. liquid and wind. Those are two <laughs> things, and he loves to go for the HVAC because they always have these convenient signs that say like, can't go over this degrees or whatever <laughs> it's yeah. always like 20 away from whatever they're at right now so you're like, oh shit <laughs> yeah um so that death i it get, i gave it five out of five stars i thought it was it was great agreed uh the next death i don't even actually totally remember but i gave it one star it was the truck death oh really uh, I, the drive through frankie g yeah 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 i love that one so here's here's my little confusion death seems to be playing loose with their own rules which i guess they're allowed to do um but there's two times in this movie where 
somebody is supposed to die in whatever order, but they seem to not die because that's part of the design. So like, for example, with the truck death, if Wendy and Ryan were just like, Hey, this is how we go. Then they get killed in, in whatever cheeks, uh, Frankie cheeks, Frankie cheeks. He lives. So death's design. I think he would have died still. Maybe it but... was their car engine, no matter what. I think they would have gotten maybe smashed as well. But like, I think it was more just like, I'm here for Frankie. But like, if you guys are going to be like that, then sure, I'll take you too. But that, that breaks kind of the death. rules because then he kills people out of order. Yeah, but he's okay with doing that. Sorry, they're okay. I like how you didn't gender death. Uh, um, I, call, I called him a he also. So I it mean, seems more likely it's a he. Yeah, just a sadistic fuck. But hey, sadistic <laughs> women exist. Who knows? Um, but I will say, I think that death, like, it doesn't really matter to death in any way. If you think about it, regardless of whatever rules that supposedly they have, it really, like, just comes down to, like, even if you get skipped, it's coming back for you. Like, there's no <laughs> escape is the thing. So I don't think he's, like, too worried about it. He's like, oh, I'll get him next time. Maybe death is the one that's intentionally documenting this stuff on the internet so that people maybe. get it wrong. Yeah, maybe. I mean, honestly, the thing is, is that like they might adjust the rules. Like I said, I think in the first one, I was like, the rules kind of change a little bit slightly. Mm. They try new angles of things like, oh, we got to have the baby or like whatever. We got to yeah. like spare someone if you or if you save someone, whatever. They change around a little bit, but it's generally the same, which is you're fucked either way, no matter what. <laughs> so Frankie, Frankie Cheek's death. Uh, you only gave it a one, though. What about the prosthetic effect? Because that was my favorite. What, what do you mean? So the when they finally they get out of their truck, right? The other truck hits and it moves. It pushes their car oh, engine yeah, yeah, forward, yeah. gets the back of his head. And then when they look up at him. And it's like the things in his head and they're like, oh, God. And then it like the thing, the wheel, yeah. of the, the engine moves again. And yeah. then his head like <laughs> and it's like <laughs> so good. I think this movie perfects the main characters reacting to every single death perfectly. They always it's like they're having so much fun with it. They just spray him with a bunch of blood every time. Yeah. And it's like they're actually like, oh, my God, like they're so disturbed. I feel bad for the actors. They probably were. <laughs> it's probably because they're the best actors that that maybe that that's we've had why. so far. I think it is true. Uh, I, I yes. So, yeah, the prosthetics were good. I think the death was. It might have just been that it came right off the bat of the really tanning quick. bed death. Like, mm -hmm. so not like, as much of a pacing on this one might ruin the tanning beds might ruin all the other deaths for me. Uh, but then we, then we get to the weight room death. <laughs> yes. I gave this three stars. Uh, the death itself was was surprising because we were expecting like his arms or his head to get cut off and then yeah. his head just gets smashed. Like you forget that like that <laughs> thing just cut the fucking ropes on both of the weights that he still has. I it's like it's he's just such a fucking moron. First <laughs> off, this guy sucks. And second, it's just it's hilarious. First off, I think or sorry. Wow, I keep saying that. But this whole sequence I think is just hilarious. All the oh. little triggers too. I'm like, oh my God, they should just leave this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this I wrote down this was my favorite scene just because all the guys in there are just screaming and it's they're screaming regardless of how heavy of a weight they're lifting like there's one shot where it's like a guy like curling 15 pounders he's like Hurr! Yeah, I'm like is this what the fucking gym is like for like you know if you're on a football team like this is just intense this just seems like over the top i'm gonna we go out it. they like sports but like jesus i'm gonna go out on a limb and say james wong uh was not big in the in the weightlifting scene <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably he's like no this is totally what it's like i would imagine <laughs> super manly but yeah it's like all the little things like 
there's all that liquid on the floor then the guy's like just ignores it and plugs in the fucking boom box on the edge <laughs> yeah. and then it starts falling and he grabs it but it's like you are not blind right that wasn't a blind guy that did that like you can see all that fucking water around the plug i mean are these guys morons too they just don't know huh water electricity that won't be good <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Yeah, that whole sequence is like, you're like, wait, where is it coming from? I do like that it's like a, you're holding, you're holding, and then nothing happens. You're like, wait, what? And then it happens. Yeah. I love that. I think it's kind of like, it's kind of like the glass smash in the yes. last movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where it's like all these little things, but then it, it's just something totally random. <laughs> so it was at this point that I had a thought, and it was unlike the previous movies. All almost almost all the deaths in this movie, it actually seems like the the main character, so Wendy, she is actually the like catalyst or the cause of a lot of the deaths. Mm -hmm. Like I've noticed this in multiple of the movies at this point where maybe you shouldn't warn people because I yeah. find that once you warn them about something, that's when they freak out and then they die. Yeah. Well, it's like in the first one, the main guy, he was like right behind death. And so then he ends up on the this on the scene of the crime, essentially. Uh, it, hella suspicious. Yeah. Uh, but then the second one, it wasn't really so much like that. But like this one, Wendy seems to be like directly inter interacting, not intervening, but like making sure these deaths happen. <laughs> and, I mean, the, and I'm yeah, like, they're... wait a second. <laughs> is she death does she take over is that what happens but like, like she wasn't responsible for the tanning beds but she was definitely responsible for frankie cheeks i mean technically if you think about it she's the one who took the pictures of how these bitches are gonna die <laughs> so it really is her fault <laughs> technically for all yeah. of it but uh, yeah i mean that's an interesting point because you're right they're always there right before it happens and then they see all the signs and they try to prevent them, but they end up just being in the way. Occasionally, like, they save someone, but it doesn't work out. It's like it well, never does. But I think the second one, the only part that really felt that way was the elevator with the hooks. Because they're yeah. like, a man with hooks is going to kill you. And she's like, what? And like <laughs> gets caught on it and then starts that whole thing. Yeah. But other than that, like, most of them have to do with, like, in this one, you're right. They all have to really deal with her trying to prevent things and then things happening. Maybe they would still happen without her, but she Maybe. does seem to be a part of the process at this point. <laughs> so that leads us into the next one, which I think I was thinking if Wendy and Kevin are not there distracting the the two people that are working does this happen but it's like they are distracting them <laughs> it's hard to say because they are like at a home depot so they're surrounded by fucking weapons at this point but this and is their job like they they've gone this far without killing themselves <laughs> like yeah but death has a funny way i mean a lot of the things it wasn't necessarily like i mean maybe those things would have happened but they just wouldn't have been paying attention i don't know but i mean they did technically save ian mckinley that guy, they dodged him out of the way from all those like things that were coming down on his head. But I don't know if necessarily maybe he wasn't even supposed to die then. That was this, just this was the the second point where I was like, death isn't playing by its own rules because Ian's supposed to die. They intervene, so then it skips and kills. Uh, Aaron is is the girl. Yeah, the she girlfriend. Gets the Which nail I gun. She gets the nail gun. I mean, she got backhanded earlier in the movie, and now she's getting just nail gunned, nailed with, in the head <laughs> with the with the hand there. Though it's kind yeah. of perfect. Like I, I hate to admit, like it's disturbing as fuck, but like it looks really cool. It's a good death, <laughs> don't you think? At least oh, for yeah. that, I I gave it I gave it three stars. So it was as good as the weight room. Yeah, the, I think death. it's more disturbing though. Like it looks yes. more painful. Like I would say this is like the closest so far that we've had to like the burning deaths. Of, oh yeah, like, like this just is super painful. Seeing her head bounce on the nail gun and like yeah, just and more like, and more. Because like I mean, and I learned this from fucked up season of American Horror Story. But like they have a whole scene where someone's like in a chair and they're like, okay, shoot him in the. Everyone has to shoot him in the head with a nail, like with a nail gun until they die. And like all of them shoot them in like normal places you would think to mm -hmm. kill them. But then 
Evan Peters, of course, is like, no, in order to kill someone, you have to shoot him in the back of the neck, not <laughs> anywhere else because they won't actually penetrate. Yeah. They'll still be able to feel everything and live. So then he finally shoots him like it's the like very back of the lower <laughs> neck. And so that's where it kills them. So she definitely was alive for the, like, a lot of that. <laughs> very unfortunate, yeah. but that's, it looked super rough. cool. But yeah, so it's like they, they skipped Ian, but then Ian was a part of the plan later on. So I was like, was Ian actually supposed to die? I don't think he was. I think he was supposed to be saved for afterwards. Hmm. But again, in the vision, he died first, right? He fell off the roller coaster first and she the girlfriend fell second. They were both like, I can't hold on. He yeah. falls, then she falls. So who knows? Maybe death's going backwards. But also, I mean, there's no Tony Todd. So we're just fucking free balling <laughs> in this movie. I don't think there's any rules because they're like, he's not here. He can't tell us what to do. Dad's fucking <laughs> playing by his own rules in this one. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get, uh, they go to the fair or whatever that thing is. Fourth um, of July parade or whatever the stupid shit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a kill, but I wanted to give it a shout out because I thought it was hardcore. Uh, the horse dragging. Yeah, was like, that was shout, gnarly. Shout out to the stunt team, because like when, when the horse just gets going, like it shows full sequence, the body just go flying like there's no like, cuts. I was wow. like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a crazy ass. Sequence. <laughs> it's insane that it doesn't end in a death. Yeah, I mean. Jesus, it's just and, fucked. and the death that it was heading towards was going to be hard, was going to be gnarly. Like the spikes, it is like Silicon Valley girl deserved better than this. And then she <laughs> yeah, gets saved. Thank God, thank God they saved her. <laughs> I do like that there's the whole thing of the main characters, too, of like, okay, we'll look at our pictures like when it's time, like because they don't want to know. Like, obviously, you would just freak out. He, I love when when Ryan's like, uh, but like, what is with my picture? Like, there's nothing up my ass, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like that's what I would be asking too. Like, it's not that bad. Like, what you know? There's nothing like embarrassing, right? <laughs> it's like, nope. The funny thing is, there's not even like any anything that like I don't, there's not even like a up the ass joke prior to this. Like, it just kind of comes out of nowhere. He's just like, there's nothing up my ass, right? <laughs> he's just like i just want to make sure because that would i mean yeah it's not like someone else just died because there was a pole rammed up rammed up yeah. their ass or whatever but i think he's just thinking ahead <laughs> worst case scenario is something up my ass <laughs> oh kevin so young and a little homophobic it'll be is that okay. his name in the movie i was calling him ryan but that's his ryan's name in real the life. actor yep. yeah kevin's the ryan Merriman. um so then we get uh, flagged to death. Speared. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. The The first thing I thought of, maybe not uh, maybe not the best thought, but like I thought of like, you know, I think like 9-11 or like some of the other stuff, like they have the statues of them like raising the flag. Like it's like that kind of looks like that. <laughs> Damn, Jace, that is dark. Also. In line with this movie, I took a note earlier when they were doing like the whole when she was explaining death and these scenarios. I was like, I don't know if it's a good idea, but you got to you got to give you know some credit to to James Wong having balls to include 9-11 and Abraham Lincoln's assassination as examples of death's plan. I did think that was very <laughs> weird. I I wasn't sure. So that's the thing. I was like, is this the fucking Twin Towers that she's telling us? Or is it like, because the plane in the first movie also, like they take out in New York. So I couldn't tell if maybe no, that was supposed to be was Flight 180. It was okay. definitely 9-11. Because it's, on a, it's on a building. A fucking credit. <laughs> I was trying to give him credit that maybe it wasn't, but you're right. But yeah, then, I thought but, that that was a weird thing because she doesn't even spend any time on it. She's yeah. just like, see this picture of Lincoln? It's like, what? <laughs> and then this picture of the Twin Towers? There's a plane reflected. It's like, wait, I'm sorry. And then she goes, and then there's these pictures. <laughs> it's like, what? And this is just a couple years after 9-11. Like, people are still weird about talking about 9-11 now. Like, <laughs> I know. I mean, it's weird. I, I, I'm glad that they kind of just breeze past it because if they had spent any more time, you'd be like, mm, ah, this is rubbing me the wrong way. 
I will say though, if not not a nine eleven prequel, but if they did a prequel about how Abraham Lincoln got tied up in the design, I'm there opening night. Like, are you telling? Yeah, like is Abraham Lincoln like the one that did he survive death and like did he now start it, this? Yeah. Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> I love this. This is like some prey shit. Like we're going back in time. That would be fun. I actually wish that that was the case. I do have to say with the spear death, I like always, it's just, they always do it, but in a horror movie, when someone gets like speared or something through them and they die, I always love the little extra, like as they fall forward or whatever. And like, it goes forward a little bit. (laughs) It's just good. Just good stuff. Uh, So then we get the, uh, I called it the McKinley smash. Yes. That, uh, a lot more graphic than I was expecting. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was expecting it to be pretty quick, but it, it felt very reminiscent of the the plate glass in the second movie. <laughs> even they even took it up a notch because, like, they're like, we're not just gonna smash him; we're gonna smash him in half, and you're gonna see his upper body and his face like dying with this. <laughs> this was like a big thing. I feel like in the early two thousands, but like. There's so many things I'm going back and maybe it's just because CGI was like, oh, look what we can do. But like every time someone would get cut in half or whatever, you'd always see the other half or one part of them like twitching. And it was just Mm -hmm. like a big thing. I could think of it in a bunch of other movies from that same time. And I'm like, this is just everyone going, oh, doesn't that look cool? Makes it look (laughs) more realistic, which I'm like, I don't know. Is that realistic? Does that happen if you get cut in half? Now I assume so, but just a funny little thing. Uh, and and that is our final death in the mm-hmm. movie. Then then we get the first ever like second premonition, like an, another. In the last movie, we got a second premonition, but it was like a premonition of the a original premonition. premonition, like a reveal, like, having, like, like weird, like sm- like different reveals of premonitions. It was very strange. I like, feel like this one, yeah, she gets like a full blown Z at the end again. Yeah, like whoever is controlling the premonitions clearly watches a lot of movies. They're like, we're going to do a reveal of our original premonition. <laughs> like, <laughs> Right. I know. But yeah, then we get a full, full blown, like second premonition of a, of another death. And all three of them. Cause it's like, Oh shit. Like the minute that she sees both of them on the train, you should be like, ah, oh, shit. Like yeah. they're all just like, oh, hey, great to see you. I'd be like, I never want to see you guys again. Are you kidding? If we're ever in the same space, we're all dead. Like, <laughs> the fact that any of them are acting like life is normal again, I just don't buy it. Yeah. I don't buy it. Six months, <laughs> however long. I just don't think I'd ever be comfortable again. That's so just I, my opinion. I actually think the second premonition, death gave her that premonition. They because they can't do anything about it. Yeah. By the time they got it's it, there really was no mean. way to intervene. So it's just like, you got me the first time, your but now you're bitch. now you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. Tony Todd can't save you now. <laughs> fucking like I drugged him, he's out. He can't give it to give you the the fucking premonition in time. Yeah. I was like, that's kind of a dick move because they can't even get off that train. Yeah. <laughs> like there's just nothing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. It's it's good though. I like that it does that and like it ends with that. I mean, pretty much every single one ends with that way at this point, but I think I think we just all should know is that we're all gonna die. That's basically the message of these movies. <laughs> well, there's no escaping it. We're all gonna be dead one day, and hopefully <laughs> not as horrifically as some of these people. Well, I mean, I don't think they'll ever top the ending of Brian blowing up. I think that is the no. The ending of the fifth one is the best ending of all time. Uh, but the Brian ending is just so funny. It's funny, but it's also like it just fucking. I gotta go back and watch that one again because you're like, oh yeah, she's related to like them, and I'm like, what? I've watched this movie a hundred times. I'm always so confused why the fuck they're having dinner or a barbecue with them at the end. I got to go back and check the notes because that just doesn't add up. They don't even speak to those fucks. It's not that important. I mean, ultimately. It's important to me because I've, I know that these movies inside and out at this point, but whatever. (laughs) Even knowing it, it still comes out of nowhere. So it does. Right. And it is a fun one. I'll give you that. But 
I think I, we'll, once we finish all of these movies, then we can decide yeah. what's the, the actual best. Well, uh, I mean, the sad thing is that there's only um, two more. <laughs> there's only two more, and uh, Wendy is not a part of them. Mary, yes. Mary, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, you were great in this movie. She I deserves to be you. happy. I'm okay with her not being in the next <laughs> one, especially because. For most, I'm sure if, if you're familiar with this franchise, most people know we're on the worst stop next of the Final Destination series. So, so this is the Final Destination hashtag 3D. Always, first off, just the worst combination of factors going on here. The fact that it's in 3D is so bad. This, <laughs> this franchise doesn't need, if it's going to be in 3D, you still need practical effects, okay? Yeah. This one goes all 3D and all like CGI, it's horrible. <laughs> but then also the fact that they're dumb enough to call this movie the final destination. <laughs> if the third one was the highest fucking grossing in the franchise, why the fuck would they think let's end it now? <laughs> yeah. Right. They really shot themselves in the foot with not having the third one be the 3D one. Cause they're like, we can't call it final destination 3D. Cause yeah. the last one was final destination three. We're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> and it's like, who, who cares? I mean, why? I, I know that this came out in like what? 2010, 2011, like right when all that shit was at a fucking all time high, <laughs> but God, that was one of the worst decisions that fucking filmmakers <laughs> made back then. I'm sorry, but like no, who the fuck has a 3D TV anymore? Nobody. We're not watching this shit. It just looks fucking terrible. No one had a 3D TV back then. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> the fact that no one even had this shit to begin with. It was like nobody even was interested in it. <laughs> Anyways, but I think it'll still we'll still have fun because there's always it's always fun to talk about the deaths. No matter well, as, what. Long, as long as the deaths are good, then we're then we're fine. Mm, they're not that great. <laughs> there is the pool scene, which is the famous one from this movie, but Oh, and, I do, and I do remember the escalator from the trailer. Yes. So, I yeah. mean, I don't know what happened to that, but I don't know. We will see next week uh, on our next stop to, I can't say the, the final destination because this is the final destination, but no, our next stop in the final destination. Just I don't know. Final destination four is next up, <laughs> guys. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We out here.